I hope you're all having a great evening. Thank you for joining me. For this video, I am Mr. Ish. It's a very interesting one because we're doing something very direct and very concrete. We have a function f of x is equal to your hyperbolic sine, sine hx. We have two values it's centered around a equals 0 and a equals 1. We have to find t4 and m4. You know by now that means you're finding two different polynomials. You're finding the Taylor polynomial going up to n equals 4 and the Maclaurin polynomial going up to n equals 4. Then extrapolate a possible expansion. Which of these do you imagine would be the easier polynomial? In all instances, the Maclaurin polynomial because a equals 0, you have fewer terms and it's less messy. Therefore, why don't we start with the m4 determination? That's what we have to do. I already have for the hyperbolic sign, we're going up to 4. The derivatives, hyperbolic sign, hyperbolic cosine are easy. They shuffle back and forth. Zero order derivative is equal to the original function. The next derivative is hyperbolic. The next one is hyperbolic sine. The next one is hyperbolic cosine. And the last one in terms of n equals 4 is hyperbolic sine. It's alternating back and forth, which is why this makes for a very good exercise for beginners for this type of subject matter. The Maclaurin series format, f of x, which you know is your hyperbolic sine, in terms of a power series format, n equals 0 up to infinity. A derivative of the nth orders or higher order derivatives with the a value. In this instance, we're looking at a equals 0, a value divided by n factorial. And lastly, you know x minus a, but that x is just going to retain on its own because a is equal to 0 to the power of n. This right here represents your Maclaurin series rule format. What will be the items that will come in here? Everything which will pertain to your n as you go from 0 up to 4 because we're only going up to 4 with those derivatives coming into play and the a values feeding into these places because that's always the a value going into your order derivatives. So let's start setting it up. It's not hard by any means. The Maclaurin polynomial for this specific function is not hard. The Taylor one is slightly hard. We'll get to it at the next part of this video, the second half of this video. The first item will be here, the zero order derivative, hyperbolic sign with a zero coming in, divided by zero factorial x to the power of zero. That's my n equals zero term plus. You see all the derivatives are positive. Everything here is positive series. With regards to Maclaurin and Taylor, everything here will be positive. So that's another item of ease we have. The next derivative is hyperbolic cosine. Hyperbolic cosine zero coming in because these are my a values coming in divided by 1 factorial x to the 1. The next item, you have hyperbolic sine in terms of a 0 divided by 2 factorial x squared. I'll do away with the parentheses now. The next one is hyperbolic cosine with a 0, a equals 0, 3 factorial x cube. And lastly, for this polynomial, which I will call m4x for your hyperbolic sine, is going to be your hyperbolic sine. We've come back to that x to the 4 over 4 factorial. You clean it out because you have to. Hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine in terms of 0 are equal to very legitimate finite numbers. Hyperbolic sine at 0 is always 0. Hyperbolic cosine at 0 is always 1. Wherever you have hyperbolic sine of 0, it zeroes it out, all of the zeros out. This becomes a 1. Hyperbolic cosine of 0 is always a 1. You'll have x over 1 factorial. And we'll keep that exponent 1. This will zero out. That right there will be an x cube over 3 factorial. We can write here your m4x can be represented in a more cleaner way. This is your fourth Maclaurin polynomial for hyperbolic sine. And this right here is 0. Basically, it boiled down to only two terms because everything else was 0. You had 0 plus this plus 0 plus this plus 0. But you can extrapolate very easily now, can't you? Your next term would be x to the 5 over 5 factorial. Your next term would be x to the 7 over 7 factorial. And then x to the 9 over 9 factorial. And then x to the 11 over 11 factorial. Everything here is easy to extrapolate. But this right here was the extent of your m4 right over here. All the zeros I've eliminated. You had 1, 2, 3, 0 items and you had 2 of these. Your m4 polynomial was made of 5 terms. Remember the number of terms is always n plus 1. Because you're starting here from 0. If you're looking at an n equals 4, you have 4 plus 1, which is equal to 5 terms. Hence, you have 5 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 total terms. Anyhow, the first part of this question has been done. We've developed our Maclaurin polynomial for the hyperbolic sign. What's the benefit of this? If I wanted to find, let's say, a value 
an approximation of a particular value of this function. Let's say if I wanted to find sine h1, what does it equal to? I'll put a 1 over here. In all the places of x, I'll put a 1 and up to whichever order I want to go to, which would be up to this point, you'll get a value that would equal to hyperbolic sine. But it won't be very accurate. As you go to a higher level n values, then of course you get more and more closer to the true value. If you want to find a hyperbolic sine 3, you put 3s in places of these x's and you'll do your computation. But the first part is done. We've developed our Maclaurin polynomial up to n equals 4, which is right up to here. The rest right here is just an extrapolation. Now let's just look at the Taylor polynomial for the same function. Taylor designation T4x. We're going to create this polynomial. You know our function is going to be, you have the n order with the a value coming in here. Divided by n factorial x minus a to the power of n. What's a over here? In all instances, a is equal to 1. a equals 1. Let's bring it in right over here. We have 1 here. We have x minus 1 to the power of n. Let's start creating our series. The first term, n equals 0. It's going to have hyperbolic sign. That's your derivative or your zero order derivative or your original function f of x is equal to sine hx. What's the value coming in here? Your a value. What's a? It's 1. Divide by 0 factorial, x minus 1 to the power of 0. That's your first term. What's your next term? Again, everything is positive. Your next term is going to be hyperbolic cosine of 1. Now, this is what I was saying. Things are a little complicated because if you take the calculator out, it's messy. Look, 1, hyperbolic sine, it's decimal number. 1, hyperbolic cosine, a decimal number. What do you do? Well, we'll talk about that soon. This right here will be 1 factorial, x minus 1 to the power of 1. Next one, hyperbolic sine, this a value here, 2 factorial, x minus 1 to the power of 2. Let's clean this up, x minus 1. Last, well, second last, we're at the third, n equals 3. Hyperbolic cosine, you have your a value, you have 3 factorial, x minus 1 to the power of 3 plus. Let's squeeze in that last one. You'll have hyperbolic sine with the 1 coming in over 4 factorial x minus 1 to the power of 4. What will we do about all of that messy stuff we have in terms of these? Before we do anything, how about we clean everything? We have sine h1. We can write over here your f of x. You know your f of x here is your hyperbolic sine, but hyperbolic sine here with a function that's centered around 1 or a series that's centered around a equals 1. All of this here is equal to a 1. And your next term is hyperbolic cosine with a 1. You have a x minus 1. Over 1 is meaningless. Then you have sine h of 1. You have x minus 1 squared divided by 2. 2 factorial is a 2. Plus hyperbolic cosine with the 1 value. You have a x minus 1 cube over 6. Then you have hyperbolic sine with that 1 coming in. You have a x minus 1 to the power of 4 over 24. This is my t4x, your Taylor polynomial with n equals 4 terms. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are my, this right here is my polynomial. If someone told you to find this, you found it. This can be a valid answer. But you can also represent everything here a little better and we will. I'm going to work a little bit here on the side, then I'll combine in the items. In all instances, hyperbolic sine is represented by this definition, which when you use laws of exponents, you have 1 over e to the x over 2. Remember, negative exponent reciprocal. You clean this up, you have e to the 2x minus 1 over 2 e to the x. This is just the algebraic simplification of that. In all instances here, you have a equals 1. Where we have x, you're putting a 1. You're getting an e squared minus 1 over 2e. Everywhere where I have a hyperbolic sign, I can put here, and I'm just saving this here, e squared minus 1 over 2e. That's my item saved there for hyperbolic sign. Now let's do the same exercise for hyperbolic cosine, then we'll bring in these items. Wherever I have a hyperbolic cosine, it's e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. Do your algebra over here. You have e to the x plus 1 over e to the x over 2. You have e to the 2x plus 1 divided by 2 e to the x. But we have a 1 coming here. And that gives you e squared plus 1 over 2e. Wherever I have a hyperbolic cosine, I'll do e squared plus 1 over 2e. Let's erase this and we'll bring this in. 
this right here and this right here will substitute for wherever you see these functions in combination with these coefficients you see in the denominators. Everything here is over one. Over here you have these factorials bringing in valid numbers. This item over here in terms of your series term will become, you'll have e squared minus one over two e. That's your first term. This converts into that. Hyperbolic cosine with this, you'll have e squared plus one divided by two e times x minus one. That's your term number two. Now we'll come back to the hyperbolic sign. You know, it shuffles back and forth, alternates. We'll have here e squared minus one divided by, you see this two and this denominator two will become four e. You'll have x minus one squared. Now we're here, we're gonna borrow this item for hyperbolic cosine. We'll have e squared plus one divided by, you see this two e and this six, it'll become 12 e. You have x minus one cube. And lastly, let's look over here and let's look over here. e squared minus one in the numerator, e squared minus one. And then you have, of course, is x minus one to the power of four divided by, you have 24 times two, that's 48 e. Now, you know I said extrapolate and expansion. I can extrapolate and expansion, but I won't extrapolate too much because I don't have space. You know I'm here at the four factorial. The next item would be your n equals five. n equals five would then have a cosine, hyperbolic cosine. It's hyperbolic sine, cosine, sine, cosine, sine, all hyperbolics. And the next term would be hyperbolic cosine. And then that would be cosine. And you know that be a squared plus one divided by two e times x minus one to the power of five divided by 120. Combine these 120 and two e. 120 and two e is 240 e. 240 e. Next item, it's the sixth item. You're gonna shuffle back to a sine. Sine in all instances is e squared minus one. You'll have x minus one to the power of six divided by two e times six factorial. Six factorial is 720. 720 times two, I'll get 1440, 1440 e. And then I won't do any more, but you see how you can start actually extrapolating them, but it's messy. You can see the big difference here between the Taylor series and the Maclaurin series for the hyperbolic sign. The A equals zero is so much easy. A equals one is messy. And it's just the way it is. But this right here is all I wanted to show you. These factors come into play over here. They combine here with your factorial denominators. And these items here grow larger and larger as the N values become larger. What does all of this represent here? This all here represents the value of your hyperbolic sign with the a value of one. If you wanted to find for a function which is centered at one, if you wanted to find the value of a particular function, you could start plugging in these x values and you'll actually determine a good approximation for whatever it is that a function represented at that particular x value. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.